people have been screaming for months and months. Next world champ, next world champ, next world champ. You are about to feel something even worse than that. You are about to feel the power. Lightning in a bottle. If you had to describe Monty Brown's time in TNA wrestling, that would be it. He had the it factor. He was a great athlete with an edgy, over-the-top personality and a finisher that was so devastating, opponents were flung across the ring from one side to the other. Close, yet so far. That's the best way to describe his wrestling career. To this day, many say he should have captured the NWA World's Championship. But unfortunately, he did not. Let's look back at his career and see what happened with the alpha male Monty Brown and what went wrong. In the very early days of the NWA TNA pay-per-views, Monty Brown had a brief stint with the company. He appeared at the third ever NWA TNA show, but it didn't last long. His babyface persona did not connect with the fans at the time, and he decided to go back to wrestling on the independent scene about a month later. When he came back in 2004, he had a different personality. Upon his return, he destroyed the insane clown posse. Then came the backstage interviews. When it comes to professional wrestling, the promo is hard to master. Some big guys can look great, wrestle good, but have trouble cutting those believable backstage interviews or in-ring promos. Monty Brown was as good as it gets when it comes to the microphone. His cadence and his timing were perfect. At first glance, his promos sounded rough, but they were raw and gritty and even had a bit of humor to it. It was something you definitely didn't see at the time. In most major wrestling promotions, you can tell that writers are making the scripts for the wrestlers to recite on the microphone. However, with Monty Brown, it was different. It seemed as if he was coming up with all of this on the top of his head, and they delivered. His charisma was unmatched. He was truly special and he could even still be at the top of his game if he was around today. One thing that also set him apart was his attire. He now wore leopard and tiger print trunks and tops and he was built from the Serengeti. He was a living, breathing animal predator. Also, his theme song at the time was a cover of Deserves Down With The Sickness. This song matched the intensity of Brown had and it was a total package put together perfectly. The final cherry on the top was his finisher, The Pounce. Monty Brown would throw his opponent into the ropes, bounce off the other rope, and deliver a shoulder block that would send his opponent flying across the ring. Many have tried to replicate that move to this day, but none have done it as good as Monty Brown. At final resolution, Monty Brown would finally get his chance at the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. It was scheduled to be the Macho Man Randy Savage against Jeff Jarrett for the NWA World Championship. There was a major disagreement with the finish of the match, as Macho Man wanted to win the world title, and TNA management disagreed, so Macho Man walked away from TNA Wrestling. To replace this main event, they had Kevin Nash versus DDP versus Monty Brown, with the winner going on to fight Jeff Jarrett in the main event for the NWA World Championship. There was no doubt who everybody wanted to win this. Monty Brown was the odds-on favorite. He won the match and went on to verse Jeff Jarrett in the main event for the NWA Championship. This should have been the moment that defined the career for the Alpha Male. Jeff Jarrett was currently in a reign of terror with the NWA Championship. In the year previous, Jeff Jarrett won the NWA Championship and would do anything to hold on to it. He was a slimy heel who would use his signature guitar to cheat and win most of his matches at the time. Monty Brown organically rose to the top, becoming a homegrown talent in TNA Wrestling. You couldn't help but root for him against Jeff Jarrett. You wanted anyone to take the NWA title from him, but on this night, it wasn't Monty Brown's night. TNA management wanted to continue building Jeff Jarrett's monster heel reign to ultimately have AJ Styles take it away from him and carry the torch of TNA wrestling. This would happen months down the road and AJ would get the NWA title. However, they should have pulled the trigger here and gave it to Monty Brown. Jeff Jarrett would end up winning the main event by hitting him with a guitar and then delivering three strokes to Monty Brown. Sure, they made him look good and protected him by having such bullshit finish, but the whole room felt deflated after this. A 
few months later, they would turn Monty Brown heel and have him a part of Jeff Jarrett's Planet Jarrett crew. Sure, this would see Monty Brown staying in the main event scene, but it made zero sense, and it made him look like a lackey to Double J. This is probably the worst decision of his career. Instead of having Monty Brown be a star on his own like he should have, they had him team up with Jeff Jarrett. It was always viewed as Jeff Jarrett was trying to protect his spot by putting Monty Brown with him instead of against him. It didn't make any sense and it really ended up hurting him in the long run. He would eventually turn on Jarrett, but it didn't really get the payoff that it should have. Monty Brown would earn another NWA World Heavyweight Championship match, however, a debuting Christian Cage would steal his number one contendership as they had a match at Turning Point in December of 2005. It was cool that TNA had enough faith in him to have him be Christian's first major program with the company, but in the end, Christian would win and then he'd go on to become the NWA World Champion. Brown would have an on and off again partnership with Jeff Jarrett throughout the year and would get another shot for the NWA Championship against Christian Cage at Destination X 2006, but he would never win the title. Following Destination X, Brown underwent surgery on his knee that he had previously blown out. He returned to in-ring competition on April 29, 2006 and stayed with the company until his contract expired after a program with Rhino and Samoa Joe. He would then leave TNA Wrestling for the WWE. Between 2006 and 2007, he wrestled on the ECW brand as Marcus Corvon. He was part of the stable The New Breed and even had a match at WrestleMania 23. Marcus Corvon would then wrestle his last match on June 19th edition of ECW and a semi-final tournament loss for the vacant ECW championship against CM Punk, where the winner would go on to Vengeance Night of Champions. In late of 2007, Marcus Corvon took several months off for family issues, and after three months of inactivity, WWE announced that Marcus Corvon was released from his WWE contract without making a return to television. After this, he would retire from pro wrestling officially. Monty Brown's sister had passed away and he wanted to help take care of her kids, a real class act that had to leave wrestling due to circumstances out of his control. Monty Brown will always be one of those talents who deserved better. Final Resolution 2005 should have been the crowning achievement for Monty Brown. At the time, there was few people in the entire wrestling business that were organically over as him. He looked like a true savage and his promos were unmatched to this day. TNA would claim that they were saving the gold for AJ Styles, but you could have let Monty Brown win that night. It was the perfect storm that all came together. The best thing about it is that it would have worked. Instead of having him end the reign of terror from Jeff Jarrett, they eventually had him team up with him, which I will never understand. Instead of being equal to Jeff Jarrett at the time, he became a step under him. Monty Brown was a big miss for TNA Wrestling. He was a real homegrown star who wasn't an ex WWE guy that caught fire all on his own. If they would have used him properly, he could have been big money for TNA Wrestling and maybe things for the company would have turned out differently. I'm not joking one bit, Monty Brown really was that special. <laughs>